Brewing was traditionally a very local process. Local agricultural ingredients like barley and hops could be transported across country, but the most ubiquitous and heaviest ingredient in beer, water, has been and still is very local. So today on Beer by the Numbers, we're examining the surprisingly complex world of water as it relates to beer, and looking at what water treatments the modern brewer and home brewer need to consider to make great beer. Hello beer nerds, this is Beer by the Numbers. At least 90% of even the strongest Russian Imperial Stout is water. Water is an amazing solvent and has a profound impact on the quality and properties of a beer. So today we're getting soaked talking about water. Let's get started. First of all, water, also called liquor when it's destined for the fermenter, is far from flavorless. To get to your glass in the form of beer, that water had to travel pretty far. Like incredibly far. From oceans evaporate up to mountain streams and work its way down into aquifers, water is always flowing. But as it flows, it comes into contact with a variety of minerals, sands, and organic compounds, so by the time it gets to the brewer, even the cleanest water has tons of free-floating ions and molecules under its spell. Minerals tend to bring the most useful flavors for brewing beer, so each type of beer and brewing process has its ideal water. It wasn't until 1900 that brewers learned how to adjust their local water. Before that, they were limited in the types of beer they could brew, and water was a large influence on the evolution of the most classic beer styles. Limestone is a common type of bedrock composed of calcium carbonate, and water traveling uh, over, under, or through limestone usually picks up some minerally goodness. Now mineral water that's gone through limestone is not the ideal brewing water. It tends to give hop bitterness an unpleasant astringent quality and affects the chemistry of the mash. It's only the addition of slightly acidic dark malts that counters the bite of limestone, and when you keep the hop rates down, then bingo! You get the classic dark beer styles of Munich and Dublin. Gypsum, or calcium sulfate, is a less common mineral but very important for one beer style. Brewers in Burton-on-Trent, England, were delighted to find that their well water was perfect to brew a new, crisp, dry, and hoppy beer style, the pale ale. Even today, if you find a well-kept cask ale, you can get a whiff of plaster drywall coming from your beer. For some beers, no minerals at all is best. The Czech town of Pilsen changed the beer world with their pale Pilsner lager, made with a very soft water from the mountains along with an elaborate mash procedure. Mineral-free water is not suited to most beers and brewing methods, but of course it's easy to add minerals to already soft water. Removing minerals from water is a little tougher, but over the past hundred years brewers have managed to develop techniques to create water to suit almost any style. It is important that water for brewing be of drinking quality and free of organic pests, heavy metals, sulfur, and other gross tasting things. For example, iron can be toxic to yeast and disrupt the fermentation process. Tiny amounts of metals like copper and zinc, while tasteless, are vital to the health of the yeast. So much so that at a brand new macro brewery, workers had to replace stainless steel pipes with copper lines to ensure healthy conditions for the yeast. Today, commercial brewers have access to a variety of industrial grade chemicals with which to treat their water to suit almost every style of beer they might want to brew. Home brewers, however, are always the industrious bunch who get by with a little ingenuity and a lot of help from the internet. There are many water testing kits you can buy and have shipped to your house to determine the levels of various compounds that affect brewing. Once you ascertain your water composition, you can either stick to styles that really benefit from your water's makeup, or you can look to improve the quality of your beer by adding things like sulfates to bring out good hop flavors, or sodium and chloride for maltier, sweeter brews. Of course, many home brewers try a more simple approach of just trying to remove fluorides and chlorine chemicals added to municipal water supplies. A simple black charcoal filter or home water filtration system does that job well. There's a lot of great resources out there about treating your water, so if you're interested, make friends with Google and see what other people have been experimenting with. 
Water is a vast majority of what we drink in beer, and small trace differences can make a big difference in the final product. So the next time you sit down to a cold one, think about what type of water makes this beer taste incredible. If you like this video, smash that like button down below. And if you want to be alerted each time we tap a fresh episode of Beer by the Numbers, hit that subscribe button. Stay curious, beer nerds. And as Grant Johnson once said, beer is an improvement on water itself.